you, thank you. Thank you very much, thank you. Well, thank you very much. Emerald Lagasse, welcome to Emerald Live. Big show for you tonight, folks. Big, big show. You know, there's nothing I enjoy more than throwing a little party. And the best part of it is having people over and you get to be creative in the kitchen. Tonight, the menu is about finger foods tonight. All about finger foods. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. You see, a good cook... A good cook always has friends. <laughs> Speaking about friends, folks, give it up for Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band. <laughs> foods. Let's get right to it. Let me tell you what's going to be on the menu. Hello, Jay. <laughs> Look at this. We're going to start with a little Spanish-style potato and chorizo omelet. And uh, this omelet that's layered, and we cut it in strips, and we'll do this little uh, sort of aioli mayonnaise on top. You'll see in a second. Garlicky cod and potato spread. We'll do that with some crispy uh, little croutons. And then I'm going to uh, show you how to make some spinach empanadas, uh, which you can sort of change up any way that you want with the filling. Fried miniature meatballs. Oh, baby. <laughs> Fried miniature meatballs. Yeah, a little saffron garlic sauce. And then we're going to do this kicked up pimento and tuna deviled eggs. That's what we're going to do. All right. Oh, yeah. This, uh, this omelet is uh, basically very popular in Spain. Then again, Spain right now is just on fire as far as tapas and finger foods. We're going to start with a skillet with a good amount of olive oil on the bottom of the skillet. While that's getting hot, I have some sliced onions, real simple, sweet onions, and then what we want to do is we want to take, I have a mandolin. We want to take a peeled potato. Or you could do this with a knife, but you're going to have to be very, very precise. And what we want to do is we want to sort of use the mandolin and get these thin slices of potato from the mandolin. Of course, you want to watch your fingers. These things come with a guard, so you may want to use the guard. And then you want to get these slices like I have right here. Okay? And I've done some here before. And what we're going to begin to start doing is we're going to layer these slices of the potato in the olive oil. And we're going to build this omelet up. Now, once they start frying, we don't want to get too much color on them. And there's a reason for that. I have some sliced here. Now, you can probably see the ones that we sliced earlier that's in the bowl, these here, they're already starting to get a little bit discolored. And that's because potatoes, if you don't keep them in water, when you slice them ahead of time, they're going to start oxidizing. It's just like an apple. If you peel an apple and you uh, don't expose it or expose it to air, it's going to begin to start discoloring. So, now that we're going to layer this potato here, now what we're going to do is this. We're going to add some salt to it. Mm! <laughs> and we're going to add some pepper. <laughs> and then we're going to add a little onion to this now. 
and kind of sprinkle the onion around. And then we're going to start, it's kind of like almost like lionese potatoes. And then we're going to layer it again. So we're going to do another layer of potato on top. When we come back, I'll show you what it looks like. Doc Gibbs in the Emerald Live Band! Yeah. Finger food here tonight on Emerald Live, and uh, let's let's get going. All right, so the potatoes and the onions, we had them layered, olive oil. During the break, we took them out, put them in a colander, so we can drain some of this olive oil out of them. Okay, and they're just like they're tender. They're like fork tender right now. Then chorizo, and I just sort of ground up the chorizo without the skin in a food processor, and just like I'm slowly just rendering out the flavor. Step number two. Now, the heat thing with this omelet is very important. So watch this. Can we get a shot of this, Buck? You, can we get a shot of this? Look, low. Medium. <laughs> Medium high. High. That's using your knob. <laughs> so you want to get this down to like medium low because we don't want to cook this omelet too fast. Non-stick pan. Now what we're going to do is go back with a little olive oil. While that's happening, we're going to whisk some whole eggs. We'll whisk them really good, and then we're going to season the eggs. So we're going to have a little salt in here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you want to have them a little spicy, we'll have a little crushed pepper in here. Oh, yeah, babe. We could put a little garlic in here, too. Yeah. Shall we have some garlic in here? Yeah. So now let me show you what we're going to do. We just take that olive oil and we're just kind of going around our, our nonstick pan. Mm, don't forget the heat now. And now we're going in with the eggs. See, if the heat would be high, we'd already start having the bottom of this omelet forming right here. And that's not what we want to do. We're going to work it nice and slow. But here's what we're going to do. We're just going to sort of move it around a little bit real quick inside the pan. And while that's happening, we're going to take the potatoes and start layering them back in the eggs. See, remember when I was telling you about we don't want to get too, too much color? On the potatoes, it's not lionese potatoes. There's a reason for that. So we got that now in there. And then we're going to go in with the chorizo. Oh, look at that. So then we got the chorizo in here. Now we're going to just sort of spread it around a little bit. Now you see how it's frothing here? There's a reason for that. Now we could put maybe some chopped parsley. Maybe you want to put some chives. But look, I don't have a bottom settled yet. You see that? 
Just let it be. It's on medium-low heat while it's cooking. See, that's why they call it cooking. <laughs> it's like my theory about fishing. They call it fishing for a reason, not catching. <laughs> it's like cooking. Slow. <laughs> now, while that's cooking, let's talk about our second finger food, one of my favorites, salt cod. You buy a piece of this, a side of this. It's preserved. It's been around for hundreds of years. <laughs> Not this piece, but... <laughs> Oh, the date on this one is 1961. <laughs> what a vintage. <laughs> so, the thing about salt cod is you got to get the salt out of it now when you're going to make this. So, the easy way to do this is you got to soak it in water. And you got to do this at least three, four times. You soak it, a few hours, change the water out, new water. Soak it. Change the water. My mom does it at least three times when she makes buckle ya. Okay? Get a little of that salt out of there. Now, while that's happening and we're soaking that, we're going to take a potato. We're going to peel it. Now, some people will argue with you about, well, why peel it? Leave the skin on. It's totally up to you. But what you want to do is you're going to peel this potato... And then what we're going to do is we're going to boil it. And once it's boiled and it becomes soft, what we're going to do is we're going to begin to start. See, this is boiled right here. Fork tender. It's boiled. Drain a little of the water out. Now, you're supposed to put this through a ricer which would be right here. Now, a lot of people, they don't have ricers. Who's got a ricer? Wow. <laughs> Who doesn't have a ricer? Okay, somebody's gonna get a ricer soon. But if you don't have a ricer, who doesn't have a ricer? I wish they could see this at home. <laughs> we are ricerless. <laughs> All right, so now what we're going to do, since you don't have a ricer, we're just going to go right in the food processor. And then what I did is I stuck that little bit of that cod right at the end in the water. Now, if you didn't want to do that, that's okay. Look. We'll put that in here without a ricer. We're going to turn this on. We're going to take good olive oil. And it's going around. It's spreading. And our omelet, look. It's getting there. When we come back, wait till I show you the omelet, and then I'm going to show you this great potato and codfish spread. Stick around. We'll be right back. food, finger food. Now, here's the big thing. I get a lot of this www.emeraldpleasehelpme.com on foodnetwork.com, right? <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I can't do that with that omelet. I can't flip it. Flip it. <laughs> so, if you're one of those, look, don't worry. Use that rubber spatula. Hey, maybe it's going to stick a little bit. Look. 
It happens. So what I do, if you're worried, if you're not a flipper, okay, you just invert it, okay? You invert it. Oh, look, so it's stuck a little bit. Oh, wow. <laughs> Dock me 55 cents. <laughs> so, we'll add some oil to a clean pan. Turn the heat on a little bit now. And look, we'll cook the other side now. Ah, right? Now look, if you're embarrassed, okay, look, first of all, there's no omelet police outside your window. But if you're embarrassed, look, parsley covers up so much. <laughs> Chives. It's beautiful. Now, we're going to add a little bit of fresh ground pepper. Now, we're going to go in here and finish our potato and codfish. I want to add a little bit of garlic in here, okay? I'm going to add just a little bit of parsley in here. I'm going in for a dip. You know, believe it or not, it needs pepper, of course. But it needs a little bit of salt. You wouldn't believe it, but just a little. <laughs> Real quick. Maybe just a touch more of that good olive oil. Olive oil is good for you. So now, this baby is done. So what we're going to do here is we're going in with the potato and the codfish spread. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, babe, look at that. We're going in for the old spread right there. Okay? And then you serve that with some of these great croutons like this that you've toasted them up. And I can hear the omelet. It's singing. It's saying, Emerald, turn it off. So now, we've got this beautiful potato and cod dip there. See, and you just kind of go in for that, like that, mm. Go, baby, go! Yeah! And then... The omelet... You just take the omelet like this, you see? We have this little pimento, and then you just take a knife, and then there's my piece right here. And then you just sort of get it on a plate like this, you see? And then you take a little aioli like this, and there you have it, folks, a little omelet like that, just fantastic. <laughs> hey, when we come back, wait till you see more party starters. Stick around, Dr. Enjoying some potty bites tonight. Y'all having a good time so far, folks? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So we have a little bit of uh, codfish potato spread with olive oil on a little crostini and that delicious uh, chorizo and potato omelet. You saw that technique, how we did that very, very slow, and then the little pimento aioli we did with a little garlic in there. Yummy. 
Now uh, we're going to go and uh, make some empanadas. Um, a little different. Uh, we're going to use a little spinach. Uh, this could be completely vegetarian if you want. Uh, you could do it with meat. Uh, there's all kinds of ways that you can do it, but first with the dough. Very unusual dough. And uh, I'm starting with some cream cheese. Starting with cream cheese. And when you're working with cream cheese, whether you're making a dough like this or you are making a cheesecake, you want to make sure that your cream cheese is out room temperature for a while before you start using it. If not, it'll sort of tend to beat up on you if it's, if it's too cold. Okay? So we're going to begin uh, by starting to sort of cream the cream cheese. Getting it a little bit soft. At this point, you can just let it rip. And um, the next thing that we're going to add to this is some unsalted butter. This would be for the dough now. So, and that butter is now creaming with the cream cheese. A little pinch of salt. See, that's why... You know, I get a lot of that WW thing, too, like, why am I knocking? You know, you know, there must be some magic that guy be doing up there. <laughs> knocking on them glasses like that. Well, there's a thing called humidity. You know, bad hair day. I'm having a bad salt day. So a little pinch of salt in there. Now... Before we start putting this thing together, oh, goodness, I'm frying my towel. <laughs> I've never done that before. <laughs> Have you ever had fried towel before, Doc? Never. I have like 300 of them. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, now, what you want to do, before you start making the dough, trust me, see this? You want to scrape this down. Not only that, you want to scrape the bottom as well and the sides. Now we're ready to get this dough going. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with about half the flour. And then we're going to slowly... <laughs> oh, yeah. Should have stayed in bed today. <laughs> So now we're slowly, <laughs> slowly working the dough. Right. And then we're going to add a little more flour. And it should come right off the sides. Now, it's coming off the sides here, what we want to then do. Oh, yeah, babe. All right. We're then going to take the dough out, and we begin to start kneading it, okay? One whole ball. That's the dough. We should actually refrigerate this for about two or three hours. Really delicious dough. After two or three hours, we want to take it out, and on a floured surface, you want to roll it on some baker sheet like I've done right here. Just take the ball of dough, roll it. You want it about a quarter of an inch, okay? Now, let's talk about the filling for a second. We're going to take... Um, I always have a little of this in my house, but <laughs> that's my house. Little bacon drippings. It's a pork fat thing, you know.
mean, I keep a nice can of it, you know. Oh, yeah, babe. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some spinach to this and basically wilt this spinach down. And then you're going to drain the spinach with your hands when it gets cool, okay? And then basically what we're going to do is we're going to add cottage cheese. Yeah, what else are you going to do with it? It's just there in your refrigerator. You had your cottage cheese this morning? Did you have your cottage cheese this morning? It's very good, you know. I mean, that poor cottage cheese just sitting there, waiting for you to eat it. If you don't, what else are you going to do with it? So I'm going to make a filling with this. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, that's why we've kept you around for 10 years, you know. <laughs> Anyhow, so the spinach gets wilted. We're going to drain it. Now he gets away now. <laughs> and we're going to make this fill, and that's what I got right here. A little bacon, a little onion, garlic, the cottage cheese. And then you're going to take the a little cookie cutter and cut as many rounds, about three-inch rounds, as you can. Okay? And then what you do... We'll just take a little egg wash like this, brush them. You want to take about two teaspoons maybe of the filling. You don't want to get too much. Too much is going to ooze out. So we fold them over, okay? Fold them over like little half moons like that. And then we'll just take the fork and we'll just sort of crimp them like that. Are you with me so far? So, we're going to bake, we're going to set the oven on 375, we're going to put them in the oven, I'll show you what they look like when we come back. Doc Gibbs! foods tonight, folks, and uh, this next one is one of my favorites. You know, many, many years ago, you go to a party, right? Swedish meatballs, you know? Swimming in that brown gravy thing. <laughs> what made them Swedish, anyhow? Is it the way that they rolled them? Okay. So we're just going to do some fried meatballs. <laughs> what we're going to do is uh, we're going to start with uh, three types of lean meats. We've got your lean veal, and I like to use about two-thirds of that. Lean ground beef. And then lean pork. Oh, yeah, baby. So we go in with the three meats right in here. And then we're going to add one egg. The egg sort of binds it. So you could add a little bit more egg to this if you'd like. Some people add a couple, three. Some people think that you should add one egg to a half a pound. There's all kinds of theories about it. Just sort of want to get it to bind a little bit. I don't like too much eggs because then they sort of suspend when you uh, cook them in the sauce, if that makes sense. A little bit of breadcrumb. And it's the fresh stuff, you know. Day old, you know. 
Yeah, week old. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, yeah. I want to eat something that's a week old. <laughs> I always been one of my favorites on the list. <laughs> no, Mom, if it's not a week old, I'm not eating it. <laughs> then we're going to add a little milk. Or you could use a little half and half. And then, of course, you got to have a little garlic in here. And then I'm adding... Then I'm adding black pepper. I'm adding nutmeg. And believe it or not, I'm adding a little coriander. A little different spice. Now, a little salt. <laughs> now, you can go in with the spoon, you know, get it all mixed up like this. Come on, you know. <laughs> Just go right in there with your hands. I mean, come on, even Mr. Rogers does that. <laughs> Pulling around with a little spoon. <laughs> this is a good time to take out a lot of frustration. <laughs> you know. Oh. Now, yeah. <laughs> I still don't get why they call them Swedish. <laughs> All right, so now what we're going to do is this. Look, we're going to take them and we're going to make these little meatballs like this. Are you all with me? We're going to roll them. We're going to make these little meatballs. Fantastic. All right. Wash your hands. Yeah. The meatball police is right around the corner. <laughs> now, what do we do with those meatballs once we get them nice and rolled like this? Well, here's what I do with them. After I got them rolled like this, Okay? I sort of take them and put them in the flour. See? I sort of get them in the flour like this. Kind of shake them up. Maybe a little essence. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm here all week. Try the veal. <laughs> a little olive oil. Extra V stuff. I mean, come on. Ooh, look, smoking. Well, just take it off. It's not going to hurt anything. Now, we get a few of these here after we flour them. Make sure they're good and floured. Oh, yeah, babe. A couple more. Oh. Shake them around. Shake them around. See, the oil is cooling down already. Shake them around. Oh. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start frying some of these here. <laughs> now, look. <laughs> Don't panic. It's like... Just add a little bit more oil. Relax. Okay? Now, while that's frying, I happen to have another one. Let me show you this. Clean hands. Now, 
Going to take some olive oil. We're going to go inside of this skillet with some onion. Garlic. Going to season it with some salt and some pepper. They're still frying. Look at that. Just shake them around. Now, tomato. White wine. And probably some of the most expensive spice in the world, saffron. Okay? Big budget on this show. So we're going to add some saffron in here. We're going to start simmering. We're going to fry the meatballs. When we come back, I'll show you what they look like. Stick around. We'll be right back. Party food tonight. 25 minutes, 375. Look at these empanadas. Look at that. All right? Now, you remember that garlic and pimento uh, aioli we made earlier that we used for the omelet? A little of that left over. Just on that and a little bit of that on the plate. And then we take some empanadas. Oh, yeah, babe. Take some empanadas like this. We stack them up. Nice little hors d'oeuvre. Okay. Beautiful. Dipping sauce. Oh, yeah. A little essence like that. There you have that. Bam, bam! Now... The fried meatballs, you fry them all up, you start the tomato saffron sauce, you cook that for about 30 minutes. The wine starts evaporating, you add a little chicken broth in there, okay? Simmer it for about another 20 minutes. Voila! All right? Then, this here, the fried meatballs, they go inside the bowl like this, okay? Best way to serve them. Very simple. You just put them out like this. You see? <laughs> and then what you do is you get these little fancy picks like this, you see? Uh. See, and they go right in the old dish like that. Okay? Just unbelievable. <laughs> Here you go, Suge. <laughs> it's hot, buddy. <laughs> now... Hard boiled eggs, five minutes. Let them simmer, turn them off. Two minutes in there, separate them. Some good Italian tuna. Okay, that stuff that's packed in the oil. Little capers. Little mayonnaise to just sort of hold it together. I don't like it too mayonnaise -y. Chopped olives. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Red onion. Yeah. yeah. Pimento. Yeah, baby. Yeah. And some hot paprika. Right? Now you just sort of get this all smashed up. Oh, look at this. You're just smashing it all up like this. Smashing it up. We can do another dish, couldn't we, right now, huh? Couldn't we? Yes. Couldn't we do another dish right now? Yes. We could. We could. We could. We could go all the way. Now... A little salt, yes! A little pepper, yay! And then, you just sort of get the deviled eggs like this with that Italian tuna. 
and you get a spoon and you just spoon it like this, you see? And then you get a little pimento garnish like this. And then you find that special person and you go and whisper in her ear, have my deviled egg, will you, baby? She says, 